Hi everybody, Nigel here, back with you with part four of the uh, Big Bad Buff for Beginners build. So, um, or Big Bad Buff build for beginners, is it? <laughs> I can't remember now, there's a load of bees. Anyway, this is part four, and uh, today we're going to be looking at doing some more painting, and we're going to get some sanding done, and basically get things painted silver. So, um, if you remember in part three, we did our undercarriage bays and everything. We did talk to you a little bit about airbrushing, talk to you a bit about paint. So, you learned a bit there, hopefully, if you're a new modeler. Um, Stephanie came on and asked a question regarding removing parts from the sprue. Um, what she was suggesting was, as I've seen a lot of people do, you know, cutting the part off the sprue. Now, there's, there's different ways of doing this. Now, I always go straight to the part and just cut it off like so. Okay, so I come to the part and cut it off like that job done the other way some people like to do things is they like to come away and cut come along and cut through the sprue now these little tamiya cutters are fairly fragile and they're not very cheap so i would not recommend using these to cut through sprue that thick so that's the first issue you will break them i will show you here i have got a pair of tamiya cutters here and there you can see i've actually chipped them there so they do break, they, they will break. They are quite flimsy on the edges because they're not very thick. So what I would suggest is with your cheaper cutters like this, come along and if you're gonna be cutting thick sprue, and this is the way some people like to work is cut the sprue like so, okay, and that's it, job done. Now there is a big problem. Look at what I've just done. I've cut that through there and look how much it's moved the part over. You can see here, if I can balance this, you can see here, Look how close that end of that spoiler is compared to the other end. Okay? And the reason for that is with these cutters, they can see what they've done. They've actually gone in, which is how these nippers work. They've gone in and they've actually formed a wedge. And they've basically, as I cut it, what it's doing is it's wedging that part away. All right? So that's absolutely fine with something big like this. You can get away with it. Look how much it's moved it over now. Okay, you can get away with it. And then you come along afterwards and you trim those bits of sprue off. Now, I personally don't see the point. Um, I think you may as well just go in and cut the part off. There is another downside to doing this. If that part was flimsy, like say it was a, a ladder. Let me grab a piece of paper here and a pen. You can imagine if it was a ladder. So here's your sprue. Here's your ladder in the middle, okay, and here's your attachment points here on the on the sprue. So you've got these thick lines here, and these are your plastic points. So rather than cut through here, you cut here. What happens is, as you saw, it pushes it away. It would actually snap that ladder off, okay. So that's where you need to be careful. The other thing you can do if you've got parts like on some of the old. Um, not Thunder Model, I can't remember the name of the company now, but they had some sprues with very, very thick connection points and lots of parts in very, very close proximity to each other. So you have to be careful not to break anything. So basically, if you've got a part that you think you're going to use nippers on and it's going to snap it, then you need to get yourself one of these little saws. And this is the JLC Libor Kopacek from the Czech Republic. And this is actually a JLC saw and they're absolutely brilliant. And with these, you can go in and you can, if, if you can imagine if I had a part on here, you can go in and you can cut through the sprue without risk of damaging anything because it's not pushing anything apart, okay? It's also very good for removing clear parts. You need to be particularly careful. We'll cover that when we come to it. When you remove clear parts from the sprue, you need to be very careful because what will happen is you cut it with nippers and it shocks it off, it snaps it off, and you get like a shockwave travel up through the plastic and you end up with a, a white mark in your clear parts. So that's not a good thing either. So there you go, Stephanie, there's my answers. So don't be cutting thick sprue with your nice cutters, use cheap ones, and don't be cutting thick sprue on fragile parts because you will break them. So there we go. So we now put those parts back in our box. And then when I'm looking for them on the sprue later, you can remind me where they are. Right, so moving forward with this project, um, we need to be painting the, the undercarriage legs, but I also want to paint the wheels at the same time because one of the problems with silver paint, whether you use it with a brush or use it in your airbrush, any metallic paints, they're very, very difficult to clean out fully. You can 
you know you can get a brush use it with metallic paints um, clean it clean it clean it clean it and even after four or five greens you come along and you, you use it with some matte black or something then you'll see flecks of of silver in your in your black paint so that's what I've found anyway so basically what you really need to be doing is keeping brushes aside for metallic and if you are getting into airbrushing if you've bought yourself a cheap airbrush and you're gonna go and get yourself something a bit nicer perhaps keep the cheaper one for doing metallics and primer and stuff um, and that's saved because there's nothing worse than coming on if you're doing something like this and you spend all of a sudden you get a bit of metallic in there because it does happen so you should be thoroughly cleaning your airbrush regularly anyway but when you're just doing between color changes you don't want to be stripping it down every time so for the painting of the silver whether it be brush or aluminium these are the paints i recommend now remember this is not a metal color we're doing here this is silver paint so before everyone starts telling me I used AK real metal and blah 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 and blah 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 and, and, and alkaline and all that we're not looking for a metal finish we're looking for a silver paint finish and these two here VA Co 71065 and 062 aluminium and steel I find them to be the best silver paints you'll get on the brush they're all absolutely awesome um, Humber are also very good but I'm not using enamels this one here is, I would recommend avoiding it, XF16 flat aluminium. It tends to be very, very grainy. The pigments in it are quite big and it can be very, very grainy and very kind of rough, very difficult to get a nice finish with. Um, whether you're airbrushing or, or brushing it, it's just forget it, it's a nightmare. But um, basically, uh, I would recommend these two as your, as your go-to and if you're going to thin it, use the Viejo airbrush thinner. And also, if you are using them, you need to prime the parts first because Viejo paint is renowned for being not very um, good at sticking to plastic. So when you're handling it and stuff, it will just come off. So I'm going to be, I've, I've used a primer. I'm going to be using that and then I'm going to put a clear coat over just to sort of seal the paint in so that when I put a wash on or weather it, whatever, I don't just wear it away. Now, I've already mentioned about the fact the airbrush gets clogged up with it easily. So I'm going to paint the wheels at the same time. And what I've done, I've got the wheels here mounted up on um on uh, barbecue skewers okay so basically you can get a packet of these these are how they come they're like 13 14 inches long maybe 12 inches long and you get them in a pack of a great big bundle of them for a couple of pounds from your local supermarket and then you can cut them down to different lengths and here i've got my wheels on them and you can see here i've got the wheels on this paint stand okay so you can that's how you can keep them now before we do the silver painting obviously you're going to have to prime them and we're going to have to do the seam cleanup. So I'm going to take the wheel here and I'm going to take my hard 400 grit matador stick. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove the sprue nibs. OK, and the reason I'm using a hard stick is because I want to remove the sprue nib and nothing else. If you use a soft stick, you will remove. I'm going to use a pen again in a minute to just explain this. If this is your surface. And you want to remove that okay i'm going to grab another piece of paper if this is your surface you want to remove that and you sand it with a hard stick you will remove that okay if this is your surface and you use a soft stick the soft stick will go in here up around the part and down that so you will end up with OK, because the sanding stick is pushing itself in, it will keep going in until it hits plastic and then it'll stop and then it'll come up and then it'll stop and it'll come up. So if you sand that away with a soft sponge, you will actually end up removing material around the bit you're trying to sand off. So use a hard stick initially just to remove the sprue nibs like so and any undulations or any evenness we've got. And if you notice, I'm going round and what I'm doing, I'm using a 45 degree I'm kind of going around like this, so I'm using a curve and I'm going 45 degrees across the wheel and that is the way to sand that out, okay? And then I'm going to come along with a, here's a 600 git, grit, git, grit Infini sponge, these are really good quality and I'm just going to go around again 45 degrees and I'm just going around and just removing the seam, no filler, no nothing. OK, and there we go. Now, I think there should be tread around the middle of that tyre, but there isn't. But we're not going to worry about that because we're building this out of the box. We're not going to start doing modifications and stuff. If you want to, you can go and get yourself some resin wheels. There's lots of resin wheels available for this model. But really, 
these wheels are lovely for a you know for a a very old plastic model that this is these wheels are lovely they're better than some on kits made today so put that back on the skewer and then grab another one and once again you can see we've got a bit of flash on this one so I'm going to take the flash off with my hard stick and if you want to get any of this stuff you go to premiumhobbies.co.uk and Ed is the shop owner and he's down in Western Supermare and if you use the code NMB10, Nigel's Modelling Bench 10, you will get 10% discount of everything. And I'd like to um, give Ed a shout out because he sends me a lot of stuff for review and stuff. And he also has a very, very good range of products. Unfortunately, he gets so busy, he's often out of stock of stuff, but he soon gets it back in. So... Here we go, and he sells all well, these are called the Infini sponges, and these are called the Matador, and the big white ones you see me using are called the zebra sticks or zebra sticks if you want to say zebra sticks. I like to say zebra. So there we go. So I'm not going to bore you with sanding all these wheels, so I'm going to go off camera now and just finish sanding these, and then we're going to get some paint paint on them. And as if by magic, here we go, all the wheels are done, primed in black and uh, ready for their silver paint to go on. So I'm gonna leave that a little while now to dry uh, before I put the silver paint on, just in case there's a reaction. Uh, and now what I need to do is paint my undercarriage legs. And as I said, I'm gonna use this um, Viejo 71065 steel. Oh, the other thing I've done, I've gone in and painted the side walls of the cockpit and the tail gunner. So that's that all done. Um, so now I need to paint the undercarriage legs and I'm gonna use this steel and I'm gonna use a drop of this airbrush thinner. Now, I'll do this on camera, I'll see how we get on, it's a piece of paper. Um, now sometimes this can play up slightly, but we will see how we get on. Not because of anything wrong with the paint, but because if there's any of my other thinners left in the airbrush, it can affect the um, what's going on. So what I'm going to do is put some of the Vallejo thinners in the airbrush, blow that back, and you can see that started to turn a little bit cloudy, which means there is something else in there that it's reacting to. So I'm going to use this. These little pots you get are great. You just you basically spray your airbrush off into that pot and that's it. So, yeah, I can see I've got some debris in there. I'm going to give the airbrush another clean and then we'll pick up from there. OK, we're back. So uh, all cleaned out now and good to go. So I've put um, basically for those that wonder, I've put like three drops of this airbrush thinner in the bottom of the airbrush. And then I've put 10 drops of the, the steel paint in. Now, as I say, some people like to be count, drop counters and make sure they get exactly the right consistency. But the trouble is when your paint gets older, it goes thicker. So basically, you know, it's, it's all it's all a bit daft, really. But um, basically, so I've got the paint in there. I'm just going to blow back through just to make sure. And you can see the bubbles stay on the surface. So we're just going to check our flow. And you can see it's flowing beautifully and it's painting lovely. There's no graininess to it or anything. And when I paint this on here, you'll see exactly what I mean. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about the area up here because above this area here, there's um, there's nothing in, in, in sight. So what you really need to do with this, if you try and spray it on directly, you sometimes get puddling and stuff and it looks a bit nasty. So it's best to sort of lay back, come back a bit and just lightly just blast it on. And you can see now why I primed it because the paint is just going to stick on here so easily. Okay, and I'm hardly spraying anything. What I'll do is I will get my piece of paper back. What I'll do, I will paint this now. So you can see how much paint I'm putting on there. You can see the paint building up on the paper. It's just a tiny drop of paint going on. There's hardly anything at all. I'm literally just fogging it on. Okay, and now and again, you will need to give the airbrush a little blow through because it will because it's one of the natures, one of the downsides of metallic paint, it will tend to sort of just clog up a little bit. You can also hear I've turned the pressure up. I'm on about 23 PSI now, maybe 25. And it just helps atomise the paint a bit better because, because it's metallic, it's got particles in it, fairly large pigments, it needs to be blown through. So there we go, you can see there. Now if I pile this on, it will look awful. I'm not going to show you because I don't want to ruin my part, but you can see there, if I pile it on, it tends to not look quite so nice. Okay, so 
Well, I'm most likely build it up in layers. And there we go, that's that one done. Do another one here. I think my dog's going to bark, so obviously I can't edit this out because painting is painting. I can't edit out the dog barking. I've got some file marks there, you can see. I'm not going to worry, that's up inside the fuselage. Yeah, the dog's going to bark. I'm sorry, I can't cut it out. <laughs> so, there we go. There we are. So, you've seen me do two. I'll go on and do the other two now. I let my dog bark away. Okay, so there we go. And legs are all done. And I've got some paint left in here, which is thinned with the Aho airbrush thinner. And this is the Aho paint. And people say one of the biggest downsides of these is you can't put the paint back in the bottle. You can. You just grab the lid like this, or the nozzle should I say, get your nail under there. It gets quite messy. And you can get this off, there we go. It's starting to come, here we are. So you can take that off, and then you can take your paint and pour it back in. Now, there will be people out there now going, oh my God, you can't do that, you can't, oh no, 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 no. And they would like to sentence me to life in prison for doing such a crime. Well, I've done it for years and I've never had a problem yet. So I wouldn't be putting it back in there if I'd mixed it with some fancy thinners or something. But because it's Viejo thinners, it's just the same as in the bottle. So um, there we go. So now I've got this airbrush and I need to basically empty all the paint out. So I can try and show you some more airbrush things. What I want to show you is this spatter thing. So if I paint here quite heavy, now it's not going to do it. Because the camera's on, it's not going to do it. And you can see I've got bits coming out now. There we go, it's uh, done. That shows you there what happens if you put too much paint on. You see it all moves around and it kind of curtains and stuff. That's why you want to be going very, very light. And it kind of remains, you can see here, my finger's clean. It kind of comes off on your finger, okay? So um, that's why I need to put a clear coat on it. Now, the next colour I'm going to paint is the aluminium. So give that another shake. I've actually given these a really good shake before I came on camera. And I'm going to now paint my wheels. So I'm not going to bother cleaning the airbrush out because the colours are so similar. So one, two, three, four drops of that. And then... I think we'll go for 10 drops of this or something like that. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Have a look at that, see what it's like. Notice I'm not putting a brush in it because I don't want to contaminate a brush with metallic paint. So, use my finger to stir it just like that. Break down the bubbles, just touch them with a cloth or something, and they'll soon disappear. There we go. So now we can paint our wheels. I'm just going to do a little test patch first. There we go. And you can see it's pretty much exactly the same colour. So we'll come along with the wheels, and we'll just paint them. You want to make sure you're getting on the angles. You can see that is a lovely, like a lovely matte aluminium paint. Now with the wheels, spraying if we just spray them like that, we won't get the rim. So we need to spray them on an angle. So spraying the wheel on an angle, that makes sure we get all the way around the sides of that centre cap. And we're also going to get the rim. And there we go. You can see that looks absolutely lovely. Okay. So, I'll just show you another one. Again, very, very light coats. Don't try and puddle this on. If the airbrush dries up, just give it a blast like that. And just very lightly, just fogging it on. You don't want to be putting it on heavy. You're not trying to cover anything in one foul swoop. Again, just introducing the paint very slowly. You can see there, 
all done. Very, very fine, very, very thin. No puddling, no problems. And we'll do the same over here. Okay, so I'll get the rest done and then I'll be back and we'll do something else. And as if by magic, here we are all done, all the wheels painted. And if you're wondering why I painted over the tyres, if you look at my, some of my military bills, you'll see that I use a circle cutter or circle marker for actually masking the wheels while I spray them. But because these wheels are actually recessed into the tyre, you can't get a very sharp edge. So I've just done it like that. I'm going to be giving them a clear coat, which is going to seal the silver paint in anyway. And then what we're going to do is we're going to brush paint the tyres and I'm going to show you how to get a, a perfect line around the edges of your wheels. So um, and then if we get a couple that aren't perfect, then we can use those on the inside facing wheels and we'll keep the best ones for the outside facing. And as you can see, their undercarriage legs, they're going to get a clear coat as well just to seal them in and make them look, make them look pretty. OK, so uh, we'll let that dry now and then we'll give them a clear coat. So when we come to painting and stuff, this is where... You know, um, up to now we've been doing building work and sanding work and stuff. It's sort of pretty much just staying with me. But now it's kind of an hour's video is going to be, you know, six, seven, even 24 hours for me. So uh, see you in a minute, but not a minute for me. As I just said, here we go. This is about oh, eight hours later now. And um, basically now these wheels, although you can hardly see it, they've been given a gloss coat. So they've got a very thin gloss coat so they've got a very slight sheen you can see a bit of a sheen on the black there and um, same on the undercarriage legs here so you can see these have got a bit of a sheen to them now and what I've used uh, through the airbrush I've used this one here which for me is the, is the best interim gloss coat you can get it, um, aqua gloss so if you're looking for a gloss for putting decals down or um, you know like this for sealing some painting so you can do some oil washes or whatever without without affecting the paint this stuff is awesome it's not the, the shiniest glossiest um varnish out there. there there's there's far better you've got your two-pack varnishes and lacquers and stuff um and you've also got your uh x22 tamiya which i will show you now here it is here this is x22 and that's just a clear gloss very very good you thin it with um you know their own thinners or you can thin it it says it's water soluble i'm not sure if you can thin it with water i think you i think you thin it with um x20a or you can use uh, mr color leveling thinners and basically lay it down thin coats build it up it dries rock hard and it's very very glossy it's very very good product these days there are millions of not millions there are a lot of gloss um lacquers out there you've got um like this one here have I got here this is a uh, a two pack this one this is available again for premium hobbies and this is a, a 2k gloss clear so you've got the you mix it three to one so you've got the gloss clear and the hardener and then you also get the the thinner that goes with it as well so that's like a two pack they use on cars you know really really good stuff extremely smelly you must wear gear you must not have any pets in the room with you um, you don't really want anybody in the room that's not wearing a, a mask when you use stuff like that. You've got this sort of thing here, which is, I don't think, very good at all. Polyurethane gloss varnish. Um, there's lots and lots of them. So uh, you've got the MRPs as well. So they do, a, this is a super clear matte, and then they do a super clear gloss. They do a super clear semi matte and a super clear semi gloss. What the difference is, I don't know. But um, they're also very good products. But again, they're single pack. You don't have to mix them, but they're very, very smelly. So um, that's had a clear coat now with Aqua Gloss, which is just, I, I'm going to leave that 24 hours before I do anything. That's been on there now about eight hours. And then we're going to give give the tyres a paint and then we'll give everything a wash. So, um, and that'll be a new one for you as well. So in the meantime, we need to be getting on with something else. Um, I also gave these uh, a quick 
once over with the gloss coat. If you put it on thin, as you can see, you don't get a very high gloss. If you sort of build it up in layers, it gets glossier and glossier as you go. But all I want this for is just to seal it in. I'll probably give it a matte varnish afterwards anyway. Um, you can see I've done it the same in here. And it just basically seals the matte paint in so that if you put a wash on there, because matte paint has like a, a kind of paper-like porous surface to it, when you put a wash or anything thin on there, it just soaks in and stains. Whereas with this on there now, it won't soak in, it will run away. So, um, you know, you can put it on if you don't like it, you can wipe it off again. So basically what I want to do now is move back to some modelling and do some seam work. Now we've got all these bombs to look at. No, not yet. Um, we've got these engine pylons, we've got some seam work to do on these. And I think we're going to need a bit of filler in these. You can see a bit of a gap in this one. So I'm going to use my zebra stick. So I've got the 400 grit here, which is pretty well worn out. And the first thing I'm going to do is go over and just basically level everything up. So clean that stick off. Um, and you can see on here, we've got a sprue nib there. So I'm just going to go around and just basically level everything off and get it all squared up so that everything's straight and there's no bits of flash or sprue nibs or mismatch or anything. So we can just go like that and get that squared up and you can see down here now I've got a bit of a line there where it's not quite cleaned up so I can leave that and put some Mr. Servicer in there okay so we just go like that and this is one of the problems we've got with the raised surface detail now we have to try and sort of get that back or just sand it all off completely and um, I've got to be honest I'm kind of thinking about the sand it all off completely route especially on these pylons so um, what you can do is leave the detail here, but just sand away this line here, this one going over the top, um, so that it doesn't sort of start and stop. It kind of you know comes up here and then it stops where you're sanding, and then it'll start again. So you can you you can actually replace it with some um, stretch sprue if you want to, uh, which I will show you in the video, not in this one, but in in part of the series. So you can replace it with some stretch sprue. You can um, let's get a coarser stick actually because this is not doing anything. So I've got a 220 now, which is worn out, so it's probably more like a, a 360 sort of thing. Um, yeah, so you can basically replace these raised panel lines with some stretch sprue, and they don't even line up. You can see there, there's one that one's a mile out with that one. So um, you can replace it with stretch sprue, or you can just sand them off and forget about them. Now I know we're going to need to do some filler work around these where they fit into the wing. So I'm not going to worry about that. So what I can do here is just put my thumb down there, put the sanding stick up to the edge of that panel line, up to the edge of this one here. If you can see that there's a panel line there, just put my thumb up to there and then use my thumb as a guide for the sanding stick and then just literally sand that panel line off. Okay, so I haven't actually sanded the this one here, but I've got rid of that one going over the top. And I can do the same on this side, get the sanding stick up next to that line, push my thumb into the sanding stick and then sand to my heart's content until that's gone. You can see we've got some sinkage there as well, so we might want to do something about that. I can see us ending up losing all these panel lines on these pylons, to be honest. But um, that's no big deal because it'll just make it the same as the model collect kit, which has no panel detail on the, uh, on the pylons. And then I'm going to come along with a sponge. Oops and just radius off the top of that pile on there. And you can see now, because we've got a good glue joint, there's no need for any filler, no seam work or anything. And you can see that it's, uh, it's all looking lovely. I'll just go around the top of that one there. As I say, we're gonna need some filler. I'll try and grab a wing so I can show you. There's one here. So basically these are gonna go, I'm not sure if this is the right side. But basically these are going to go in here and you can see that I think this is the wrong side actually. Um, let's grab the correct wing out of the box. We've got some flash there to deal with. A piece of flash there we're going to cut out. There we go, that's gone. So we can see when we put this in, we've got a it's not a bad fit, but we've got a gap around it. So we're going to be doing some Mr. Surfacer or filler work or whatever in there. But um, you can see that front edge of that pylon is looking lovely, nice and smooth and straight. And that's why we use the hard sticks 
um, first of all, to get a straight edge. And that's the only way you're going to get a straight. You're never going to get a straight edge by using a sponge. So, yeah, use the hard sticks. Get in there, straighten it all out. Same on the back here. Get in there with a the hard stick, straighten it all out. Job done. And again, I'm going to remove those panel lines from there because we've removed half of them on the seam, so we may as well remove the rest of them. Just like so. There we go, and then we can come in with a sponge. Just go over the back. There we go. Now we've got a bit of a mismatch here. I'm going to have to put some Mr. Servicer down there. I can feel it's a bit lumpy bumpy. And also we've got a bit of lumpy bumpiness here. Now if we work on that, we're going to lose our panel lines. It's sort of you'd have to sort of pay your money and take your choice, as it were. What are you going to do? You're going to mess with it and and lose the detail, or you're gonna just leave it as it is. Because when that's got the matte paint on the camouflage, that probably won't even show there. You can see the if I hold it in the light there. You can see the sink here. Okay, so I think we'll just leave that. Okay, so I'm gonna go on now and do the rest of these pylons. I didn't go underneath, did I? Got this bit under here we've got to take care of where there's a bit of a nasty step. So there we go. And then just finish off with a sponge just to round off the edges and stuff. And again, you can see we've got a bit of a mark in there, so we'll get some Mr. Surfacer in there as well. By now, you'll have probably realised, if you're new to this channel, I love Mr. Surfacer. I've even done a video about it. And uh, I use it on everything. So, there we go. So that's that pile on done. We need some Mr. Surfacer on there. We may put some in here, I don't know. I'll probably leave it. And then, uh, and then we're away. So I'll get the others done. I've got the other three here. I'll get these sanded. And then um, I'll come back and we'll do some Mr. Surfacer work. So we've sanded them all now, there's all four of them there, and I've, I've made a start on these uh, pylons as well. Um, but I want to show you something here, this is something to look out for, good for the beginners. If you remember when I glued the bombs together, the, the, the wing tanks, sorry, I talked about making sure you get the glue in there and getting a good, strong, solid joint. Now, one of the things you could check for to make sure you have got a good, solid joint is looking down here. Now, if you look down the front of this pylon, you can see it's... It's a uniform grey plastic colour. We can see no white lines. There's nothing there that's um, that's untoward. Okay, so that's all grey plastic, no white lines, and we're all good. Now, if you look at this one, we can see down here. We can just see. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera. You can just see that white mark there. So the way to test it is give it a quick squeeze, and you can oh look, see that whole white line appearing. That's where the glue hasn't bonded the joint it's where it's just maybe the parts aren't quite flat together they're just like that so basically we need to re-glue that now luckily with this part we can get in from behind so that's uh, that's going to be fine we can get in there with some glue and glue that but uh, when you start to see these white lines appearing you need to take action immediately now if you can't get from behind what i would generally do is run a knife along there which would be quite simple give it a squeeze just get the knife into the groove and just run the knife along like so like that okay and then come along with your cement and this is one of the issues with the extra thin being such a small brush you can't get a lot of glue in there and you can see that as soon as I put that in there it can pillories down the joint and now we're going all the way up look see all the way up here We've got a white line appearing and you can see the glue capillaring into that joint so there we go and now you can see it's completely split open so um what we need to do there is let that go off what i might even do is run some super glue in the back okay and that'll just give it an extra little bit of strength so we'll just go through and check the others now this one's absolutely fine this one looks absolutely fine i give it a squeeze nothing appears 
And this is a good way of doing wing leading edges. If you give the wing a squeeze, if you see a white line appearing, then that's when you're going to get problems with your joint. You, it'll be a white line at the moment, <clears throat> then it'll become a crack, and then you might find your model start to fall apart. So, um, you know, look out for it. You need to find it now and get it sorted. So we'll just paint some glue in behind there. Get it in there nice and flooded and make sure we get a good bit of wild action going in there. In fact, what I will do, I will use sprue goo. And I'm going to give you a quick introduction to sprue goo. Okay, so I've done videos on this before and um, been very, very well accepted and uh, appreciated. So I'm going to do another one again now. This is for the uh, newer modelers out there, for the beginners. Um, and this is how we're going to make sprue goo. Now I've talked about sprue goo. This is my sprue goo that I use. And this is basically made with glue and styrene. But you can see it's got like a brown colour to it. I added some, I just added a drop of acrylic paint just to give it some colour. Because when you're working with white plastic, if you've got white sprue goo, it's difficult to see exactly where it's gone. So I've put, I've, I've put a little bit of dye in there that just gives it a bit of colour. But you don't need to do that. So to do this, we need a liquid cement. And I'm going to start with Tamiya Extra Thin. Now, this is the go-to cement. If you don't already use this, I suggest you get yourself some if you're in, into your modelling. It's probably the best modelling cement out there, in, in my opinion. Um, others will say MEK is better or whatever, but this, I think, is awesome. They also do a... Here's um, I usually have these in this dispenser here. This is from Premium Hobbies, this company here down in Weston. Um, and it's, it holds three bottles of... Um, of Tamiya glue. So we've got the extra thin quick setting. You can see it's like a lime green rather than the green there. And this one is a very, very hot cement. It dries practically instantly. So it's great for, you know, attaching small parts and stuff. But the trouble is if you, if you apply it to your part um, straight away, like so, it will just dry. It just evaporates and dries straight away. You see that's going gone. Okay, so you know, it's really only really suitable for when you're, um, you know, hold a small part in place, dab the glue on, let it capillary, and then to take your hand away. That's what it's good for. Whereas this one will, will stay wet a lot longer. Anyway, I digress. So we take some of our Tamiya Extra Thin and an old Tamiya Extra Thin bottle or any resealable bottle. We've got some here I've made using a Tamiya paint pot. This is actually for a, um, a project I've got on the go, which is made of ABS. So this is an ABS sprue goo oh, stinks um made up with abs glue so it's the black plastic that the kit came in and you, so you can use a tamiya pot and it will stay fine but best to use the um the old older uh, tamiya glue pot because you've got the integral brush so all we need to do is pour some of this into there now it can be poured i'm going to use a pipette because you can guarantee because the camera's on it'll go everywhere so I'm just going to use a pipette, put some glue in here. Okay, there we go. Now, put the lid back on that one. Okay, so you can see here, I'll put the lid back on. I've got this, I've got about, I don't know, eight millimetres in the bottom of there. Nothing, nothing much at all, really. So, what you can do then, although it's called sprue goo, you can use model sprue and a lot of people do I tend to use the white styrene now this is basically you can buy strips of styrene sheets of styrene um, it's basically plastruct or evergreen uh, and it is pure styrene now model kits have all sorts of different additives in them and different sprue reacts in different ways to this and what I found in my experience is they generally shrink back a lot so you, you put some on and they just shrink back to practically nothing. Whereas with this, if you use this, you know where you are. You're stable all the time. It's the same as, you know, if you were soldering something and somebody kept giving you different solders, you've had to keep relearning. If you stick with this, you know what you've got. You know what you're going to get. And every time you pick it up, you know what it's going to work like. So I would suggest using this other than when you've got really, really hard plastic, really, really soft plastic then it might be an idea to make it with the sprue. So I've got these little bits of scrap in here. I keep all the scraps and everything for this. So basically I'm just gonna pour this out on the bench and then take some smallest pieces. The smaller they are, the better, the quicker they'll dissolve. So 
all we do is put these little bits of plastic in here and they will dissolve. Now anything that's a bit chunky like that you can just come along with an old pair of cutters and cut it or mark it and then you can break it into smaller pieces. The trouble is if you put great big pieces like this in it will take forever to dissolve. Okay so um, you know keep it small the smaller the better because you've got these tiny little bit of pieces that we're never going to really use for anything anyway. Um, but I always keep these bits of plastic that I've cut off because you know if you're just making a little but you just want to put a little wedge into a corner to something in a, in a nose gear bay just to make it a bit stronger you know a little piece like that absolutely fine cut that into a into a diagonal make a little buttress from that absolutely fine so we're just going to add the the sprue in here or the sprue the uh, the styrene sheet just add it in there put all these tiny bits in and they will all dissolve down and basically consistency wise we'll just leave that like that for now we'll put the brush back in you can see that in there and just give it a shake so it's all wet and that will start to dissolve and you will end up with something like this now what I tend to work with is you want it to just not string so this is about right See when I pull this out it doesn't string. If, if when you pull the brush out it strings all the way out then it's a little bit too thick. So just thin it down and touch. You can add some glue to thin it down. You can add some plastic to thicken it up. But we can see in here that already that glue is starting to turn white where the sprue is the, um, the plastic and the styrene is all sort of melted together now into one lump as you can see it won't rattle around and shake about. So um, that's basically how you make sprue glue. Okay, so here we can see after about an hour, our sprue goo is uh, starting to develop. It's, it's, it's very thin. As you can see down here, it's very thin still. But you can see the plastic is, is basically um, melting away. You can see on the end of the brush there, we've got some sprue goo already. But you can look down inside there. You can see it's all melting. Now, this is going to end up a bit thin, I think. So we'll, we'll just leave it for now. Um, it's easier to knock it back to thin it rather than it is to thicken it because obviously if you add the, the glue then it works instantly whereas if you need to thicken it up you add the plastic it takes a while to, to melt and, um, and sort of get down into the goo. So there we go that's, um, that's that on its way. Okay so this is a, um, a hatch from a Sherman that I'm building um, that I'm not going to be using. Well, we can see here if I take the the sprue go out it's very very thin it's trying to drop off the brush and if I apply it on here I want to use it as a filler say to fill in these ejector pin marks then basically it's you can see that it's very very thin um, and it doesn't go on very thick so I'm going to thick it up, thicken it up a little we can see that I can brush it out to pretty much nothing because it's so because it's so thin and the thinner it is, obviously, the more glue it has, the more solvent it has, the longer it takes to dry and the more it will sink back. So that would basically dry back to pretty much nothing. Um, so I'm going to add some more bits of plastic. Another little tip for uh, for well, everyone, really, um, something I've discovered. One of the problems with these Tamiya bottles is this seal keeps coming off and it will fall off on your model. Um, and some people manage, I don't know how to get it into the bottle. But something I do is this put the seal in the lid okay and you want it to be you want it to stay in the lid like that okay and then in here inside the lid there's a you can see there's a ridge and find something to point it with got a drill here you can see there's a ridge around here okay between the the seal and the actual lid if you get a pair of long nose pliers and just go around and just bend that ridge like that and just bend it out so you can see it's not no longer round it'll still go in the bottle absolutely fine okay but it holds that cap on and stops it falling off so there's another little tip and you can see that already this sprue go on here is drying back and it's basically there's there's nothing to it it's, you know you can still see the ejection pin mark 
it's a little bit too thin so I'm just going to add some more plastic to it and then we'll come back and see what it's like after it's thickened up okay so now we've got the um the sprue goo's done it's been, oh, it's been a couple of days to be honest but uh, yeah, a few hours and that extra um bits of pl white plastic card have melted in there so I don't know if you can quite see it but the, the consistency now is a lot thicker you can see in the bottom of the jar there it's a lot it's a lot thicker okay so that gives you an idea of the kind of consistency we're looking for all right and when you look at it like this you can see it's um it's just it's just stringing all right now if you remember i showed you i did this on here you can see that it's basically because it was so thin it's basically shrunk back to nothing and you can see that ejector pin mark under there so you know it's not really much use as a filler if it just shrinks back that much so when it's thicker like this you can actually get more on so it can you can actually get it in there and, and sort of paint it on and then it will it will dry back a lot sort of higher up um, and much better as a, as a filler uh, one thing to to remember there is a downside to using this stuff it's um it's basically a very hot filler it's going to bite into the plastic it's going to eat into it so if you're using it for, on these b52 engine pylons you can see I've put some in here and you can see that it's actually shrinking back okay so you, you need to be careful don't don't rub it down too quickly uh, what I'll do here I'll just add some more okay and then I can just add some more in the middle there and that will do that and I also want to put some on the end here where it's been mismolded there we go Okay, so that's the kind of thickness we're looking for. Let that dry off and then we can sand that all back. Right, so there we go. That was a video I did a couple of weeks ago and that just basically shows you how to make the stuff. So um, as I say, go for a consistency where it just sort of strings. Now this may be a touch thick. If you want to thin it down, we can add some more extra thin, but uh, We'll leave it like it is and all i can do now is with this little brush i could just come in the back and i could just brush in some of this goo and it will basically have a because it's got extra thin in it it will have a welding action but because it's thick it will also have a filling action and in this application rather than just filling what we're doing is adding some strength Just in case, because if you can imagine, if you could draw a section through the through the actual parts looking end on, looking down there, you hope you've got a joint where the plastic comes around and you've got flat faces and the glue can weld together. But if they're like this, then you'll only get the actual edge. So what this sprue glue will do was actually fill in any gap that's there. Now I'm just going to brush some into the others. I'm just going to pull this brush out of touch. It's when we get a bit more glue, it's just you can pull that piece out of touch, make it go deeper into the bottle. There we go, that's better. There we go. Nice to see that a lot of you are enjoying this build. Um, getting some really good positive comments. Getting a couple of negative ones as well, but it's only a couple, so that's not so bad, eh? Um, <clears throat> But yeah, a lot of people, uh, it sounds like it's taken a lot of people down memory lane. And I noticed the, uh, well today is Monday, it's Monday morning, 24th of August is it? Yeah, 24th of August. And I noticed that the, um, the one that was up on eBay sold yesterday, so... Hopefully somebody's bought that as a result of watching this. So there we go. So 
that's all done now these little bits of string that come out don't worry about them just leave them they will um they'll come off easily so that's all about sprue goo and there we go now that needs thinning down a touch all the stringiness is caused by the fact that it's a little touch too thick so i'm just gonna when you pull it out and you get that string hanging off the end like that you can see there that's when you need to um just thin it down a bit so i will do that later but on these pylons um, what i did do i said i was going to add some mr surfacer and here we go you can see on that one and this is the one that needs the work unfortunately so you can see i've added some on the bottom of there so i'm literally going to come along with a 400 stick matador stick and just basically sand that out get it all smooth that's removed any mark that was there and then i can get like a an 800 sponge and just sand over because we want these nicely radius edges so that's a perfect opportunity to use a sponge and just sand over there it's not going to put any flat spots or anything it'll just round everything off nicely okay so uh that's our pylons done right so moving forward just to uh quickly well, just moving quickly forward to end this video part, part four i'm going to talk about painting tires i'm going to show you a method i use for getting a really nice crisp edge on your wheels so the first thing to remember tires are not black they are a very very dark gray and companies make there's all sorts of different manufacturers tamia do a rubber black um mr hobby do an aqueous uh, h77 tire black that is a great color and also another great color is this one is the revel aqua color number nine three six one zero nine it's called anthracite they're both fantastic paints now i'm going to use this one purely because those watching will find this um the beginners will find this more readily available than they will this one so basically you get these just a twist off cap and as you can see inside it's very thick and where am i it's very very thick and very very gloopy so we need to make sure that we've actually got a um a, a good mix in there so what we're going to do we're going to take a brush and we'll use the back end of the brush and give it a stir just to make sure you can see that the, the gray pigments are coming up i don't know if you saw that but i certainly did and um you may think it's okay to use as it is but it's not so always give it a good stir like so wipe as much of it off onto the brush as you can onto the start onto the brush onto the off of the brush onto the side of the pot and then what i'm going to do here i'm going to be using it really really thinned i'm going to thin it with water and i'm going to use an upturned old tamiya paint pot so what i can do here is rub that excess paint off onto here rather than waste it Okay, I'm just going to reposition the camera. I notice I'm off, I'm off to one side. Right, so that's better. Uh, so now we can take some paint on our brush and we can just brush it onto here. We can get that over there. I wasn't supposed to go down the side. But we've got a paint. You can see here how thick this paint is. And I wouldn't suggest using it like that. I would suggest always thinning it. Now, for doing this, what we're going to do is we're going to water the paint down so that it's very, very thin. All right, and then we're going to use it and use capillary action to make the paint run around our wheel so i've got a um, this is an old badger airbrush jar here so if i want to do is i put it put my finger on the end and then let it go it, it forms um a vacuum and i get drops of water coming out and it's a very good way of getting tiny amounts of water to mix with your paint there we go so that's i'm going to mix that now and that's become a very very thin mix okay and i'm going to just wipe the brush off because the, the, the roots of the bristles will still have the thick paint in them so there we go so there's our our paint now which is extremely thin and we can see if I go onto the site, oh, I can't use that jar. If I go onto this plastic cup, paint it on, you can see how thin it is. Right, so I've also noticed, if you notice on there, 
we need to take away that problem with the surface tension. So I have over here, this is alcohol, it's about 20% alcohol, about 75% water and about 5% um, screen wash. I'm just going to add a couple of drops of that and that will remove the surface tension. So now when we paint this on here, now it, nothing's going to work on this because it's so shiny, but it will, it does, it will help. So right, we've got this really thin mix. We may need to thin it a little more. And if you notice, I've got quite a large brush. And the reason for that is when you're doing precise work, you're always tempted to go in with a tiny brush. The trouble with the tiny brush is it doesn't hold any paint. So for an operation like this, it's not always the best to do. So we'll get a wheel. I'm going to come along and I'm going to touch this brush into the corner of the tread there and we should see the paint start to capillary around. Okay, there we go. Can watch there you'll see it join up that is how you get a perfect edge and then what we're going to do the excess paint that's built up just going to brush that away so we don't get any pooling and there we go we've got a pretty much perfect edge there And if it's not quite perfect, it's gone over there because I think really I put too much paint on there. Take a cotton bud and you can wipe it around. Start again. Because it's water based, it will just come off easily. Okay, so we can come on here now, take some of that paint off. Now you can see it capillarying around now. we go that's better and then what we'll do is we'll give that another coat and then that'll be it done so I'm just going to show you again to give you a better example because that one went a bit wrong so what I've got here is a piece of tissue and I'm just going to dab the paintbrush on the tissue just to remove the excess because I think the problem we had there was it puddling so you can see I'm just literally going up to the edge in fact I'm going to thin it a touch more just literally touch the touch the brush into the edge and it will join up just like so you can see these blobs are starting to join up And then you can just drag, drag them about. Just fill in the gaps and there you go. Now if you want to make it capillary faster, you can make the paint thinner, but you'll have to put like three maybe even four coats on there so uh here we go okay so that's your that's your first coat i'll get the rest done and then i'll see you for part five so thanks for watching guys that's been part four we've learned quite a lot Part five, we'll start to assemble this thing and um, really, really start to push forward the cockpit and everything. 
So I'll see you for part five. Thanks for watching and happy modeling. Stay safe. See you all soon. Bye for now.